This is a three-phase induction motor. So we have three separated sets of coils in the stator. The ends of each set will connect with the terminals within the electrical terminal box. We will also see how these are connected a little later in this video. When connected to the electrical supply, the stator generates a rotating electromagnetic field. By the way, you can also learn how variable frequency drives work in detail in our previous video. I'll leave a link in the video description down below for you. The stator contains all of the coils or windings used to create the rotating electromagnetic field when electricity is passed through the wires. To power the coils, we find an electrical terminal box on the top or sometimes on the side. Inside this box, we have six electrical terminals. Each terminal has a corresponding letter and number. We have U1, V1, and W1, then W2, U2, and V2. We have our phase one coil connected to the two U terminals, then the phase two coils, which are connected to the two V terminals, and lastly, the phase three coil, which is connected to the two W terminals. Notice that the electrical terminals are arranged in a different configuration on one side to the other. We will see why that is in just a moment. We now bring in our three phase power supply and connect these to their respective terminals. For the motor to run, we need to complete the circuit. And there are two ways to do this. The first way is the delta configuration. For this, we connect across the terminals U1 to W2, V1 to U2, and W1 to V2. This will give us our delta configuration. Now, when we provide AC current through the phases, we see that electricity flows from one phase to another as the direction of AC power reverses in each phase at a different time. That is why we have the terminals in different arrangements in the terminal box because we can easily connect across and allow electricity to flow between the phases as the electrons reverse at different times. The other way we can connect the terminals is to use the star or Y configuration. In this method, we connect between W2, U2 and V2 on only one side. This will give us our star or Y equivalent connection. Now, when we pass electricity through the phases, we see the electrons are shared between the terminals of the phases. Due to their design differences, the amount of current flowing in the star and delta configuration is very different. Let's have a look at the difference between the star and delta configurations. Let's say we have the motor connected in delta, with a supply voltage of 400 volts. That means when we use a multimeter to measure the voltage between any two phases, we will get a reading of 400 volts. We call this our line to line voltage. Now, if we measure across the two ends of a coil, we again see the line to line voltage of 400 volts. Let's say each coil has a resistance or impedance as this is alternating current of 20 ohms. That means we will get a current reading on the coil of 20 amps. We can calculate that from 400 volts divided by 20 ohms, which is 20 amps. But the current in the line will be different. It will be 34.6 amps. We get that from 20 amps multiplied by the square root of 3, which is 34.6 amps. That's because each phase is connected to two coils. Now, if we look at the star or Y configuration, we again have a line to line voltage of 400 volts. We see that if we measure between any two phases. But with the star configuration, all our coils are connected together and meet at the star point or neutral point. It's from this point that we can run a neutral wire if needed. So, this time, when we measure the voltage across the ends of any coil, we get a lower voltage of 230 volts. That's because the phase isn't directly connected to two coils, like in the delta configuration. One end of the coil is connected to a phase 
but the other is connected to a shared point. So the voltage is therefore shared. The voltage is less as one phase is always in reverse. We can calculate this by 400 volts divided by the square root of 3, which is 230 volts. As the voltage is less, the current will be 2. If this coil also has an impedance of 20 ohms, then 230 volts divided by 20 amps equals 11.5 amps. The line current will also therefore be the same at 11.5 amps. So we can see from the delta configuration, the coil is exposed to the full 400 volts between two phases, but the star configuration is only exposed to 230 volts between the phase and the neutral point. So the star uses less voltage and less current compared to the delta version. Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue learning about electrical engineering, check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as the engineeringmindset.com.